Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, first and foremost, I hope you're excited, right? 7.30 in the morning, let's talk about fixing the meniscus. It doesn't get much better. Uh, but also, I just want to say very quickly, um, and I'll be saying it a lot, it's my first time ever in India. Uh, your medicine's fantastic, but even the people are the best part. Y'all are, hands down, the nicest culture I've ever been around. So thank you so much for the uh, unparalleled welcome. I appreciate it very much. Um, all right, so let's get started. Um, thank you, Pune. Uh, thank you, conference chairpersons. I am a consultant for the Pew Synthes. Uh, you will see me talk about that to some extent. So why are we saving the meniscus? We were just up here talking. It's very much uh, in vogue now to save the meniscus, whereas even 10 years ago, we were debriding it more. So when I talk to my patients in the States, when I have to explain this to them, and they go, what is the meniscus? I go, well, in a young person, I think of the cartilage like a brand new highway, right? A brand new paved highway. And I say the meniscus are like the tires on the car, right? They're protecting the highway from getting damaged from a car that's just on rims. And I think about that, and I think that's what our meniscus does. It helps to dissipate the forces encountered by the articular surface when we walk. So understanding the meniscal anatomy is very important, right? I do believe, and you'll see this in my talks, Einstein said, keep it simple, but not simpler. So I do try to keep things simple, but I think we have to understand the anatomy here. And if you look to the right picture, the microvasculature of the meniscus is very much on the peripheral edge. And I know everybody in here knows that, but that's very important, right? Because a debridement is still an option. And I'm gonna talk about it briefly, but I'll primarily talk about repair. But if you have someone who's overweight, you have someone with arthritis, you have a tear that you know this healing is not going to take place, you have someone with diabetes that's microvasculature may be poor, I think it's easy to sit up here and say, oh, fix everything and just take them back to the OR and do a debridement. But I think in reality, it's very difficult to walk into a patient room and say, hey, your surgery failed, let's go do another one. So I think we have to keep debridement on the table in certain instances. So again, looking at the vasculature, you can see here very well, and this uh, like arthrogram, if you will, or um, that you can see the vasculature in the red, red zone, red, white zone. But look very briefly, very quickly, right here in the white, white zone, it stops. The, oh, you got a pointer, thank you so much. The vasculature stops. So that's why we really focus on red, 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 white zones. And I know people say, oh, white, white zone tears heal. I get nervous, but I have seen my own tears heal there too. So in the meniscus, we're looking to, again, what does it do? It improves the congruency of the surface area. So this is why we have to fix it if we can. The medial compartment shares 50% of our load. The lateral compartment shares 70% of our load, right? We transmit 50% of this load in extension and 85% of this load in flexion. So if we do a partial meniscectomy, right, we decrease the contact area by 10%, but we increase the load across our joint by 65%, right? The goal for a lot of people in the States is to walk 10,000 steps a day. You can imagine how repetition that will have an impact on your joint. So what about meniscus debridement, right? In the States, it's the most common treatment modality for meniscal symptoms in patients over 40. That might be changing a little bit, but it's very quick. It's reliable. It allows for a quick return to activities. We were talking up here, my professional athletes, sometimes we do this, and my high-level athletes will do this because it gets them back to sport really, really quickly. It helps them make their money, but they're a very unique population. Uh, Fairbank showed in 1948 that the effects of a meniscectomy can have very quickly on arthritic change. And here's, in over 50% of partial meniscectomies, they'll demonstrate a chondral changes in as early as six months, and 50% will develop away in 10 to 20 years. Further, Collins showed in 2020, they compared MRI changes in knees undergoing meniscal debridement and those that do not. In as early as 18 months, MRI changes in the articular surface could be seen in up to 60% of patients. So there is definitely an effect of a mis meniscal debridement. I'm not saying that at times it's not the right thing to do, but in a young patient with an appropriate type of tear who has good healing potential, I think we should attempt to repair. So a repair, it restores the anatomy, it restores the kinematics. Yes, it's a longer rehab, but in the long term, it may be better for the patient. It can decrease, I don't think it prevents, but it can decrease the onset of arthritis. In 2017, Nakiam showed that 91% of patients can return to sport 
at a two to five year follow up after a meniscus repair. So your patients can get back. And Feely showed in 2016, it's a more improved cost saving surgery and a better long term outcome than a debridement. So this is a great article from Arthroscopy 2019. Basically, it goes over the different tear patterns. It shows uh, some of the contraindications to repair, such as if someone's arthritic, uh, if someone's un un unstable, uncontrolled instability. I personally think a BMI of 35, a malalignment, is definitely a contraindication and a very bad varus knee for a medial meniscus. I think uh, uncontrolled diabetes in an older patient, we just talked about the microvasculature, you're asking a lot for that meniscus to heal. So again, it's, you know, we say do a lot of meniscus repairs, but it's not in a vacuum. And then finally, though, it does improve joint contact for forces, and it does reduce the long-term risk of arthritis. So I don't know much about cricket, but I know my audience. So I'm willing after this to talk to anybody about cricket. I would love to learn about it because I take care of a lot of baseball players. So I'm very fascinated. But do they return to sport? All right. So... There's an old saying in the United States, don't ever fix a wrestler's meniscus to breed it. And this article does somewhat show that. Marigi showed in 2021, 89% of people with a meniscus repair get back to sport, but only 65% of wrestlers. Nakayama showed in 2017, eight, almost 80% of medial meniscus repairs and 82% of lateral meniscus repairs get back to sport. And finally, Alvarez Diaz, although it's quite a bit, uh, eight years ago, 2014, showed 90% of soccer players get back. So meniscus repair does work and your patients can get back. What about debridement versus repair? So as Zai Wei Gan in 2020 did a retrospective study comparing debridement versus repair. And he showed that the complex tears did significantly better with repair than debridement, probably because if you debride the complex tears, you're probably doing a subtotal meniscectomy, which can lead to arthritic change in five years. So here are the IDKC scores. If you look at pre-op and post-op for debridement, it's a 20 point increase. You look at pre-op and post-op for a repair, it's over 40 points. So over twice the improvement in long-term outcomes uh, with repair. Further, if you just took all comers with meniscectomy, still the improvement is still greater in repair versus debridement by four points. So does meniscus repair really work? Does it heal? So I think we can look at, go to Stedman's data from 2015. It's a 10-year follow-up meniscus repair data uh, comparing patients over and under the age of 40. And what they showed is they had 110 patients under the age of 40. They had a 5.5% failure rate at 10 years. They had 38 patients over the age of 40 and they had a 5.3% failure rate at 10 years. So they're saying age may not really matter. I may disagree with that a little bit, but I do think we can push the limits a little better because our technology's improved and our understanding of the meniscus has. They also showed no difference in failure rate with ACL. In this same picture is a, is a lateral meniscus radial repair I did, and you can see it's healed all the way through. So in conclusion, I think the goal of the meniscus is to dissipate the forces encountered by the chondral surface, right? Meniscus repair does have a high rate of success in the correct patient, right? The contraindications, arthritic, untreated instability, a high BMI, this, all this makes sense, right? Malalignment, and I do think age, right? It's about that microvasculature again. We can now repair meniscus tear orientations we could not previously do, right? Five years ago, we were told don't do radial tears. Now we're doing them, right? Um, and thanks to Dr. Uh, Sachin, I have to do a talk on it here in a little bit. So, uh, but meniscus repair does have a higher return to sport, except wrestling. Um, and finally, patient reported outcomes are better with a meniscus repair versus a complete meniscectomy. So why are we saving the meniscus? Because you don't want your patients uh, having their car driven on a road like this, right? We want our tires in shape so we don't damage the road. All right, thank you.